Hi everyone, for you, those of you who don't know me, I'm Stefan de Witt, I'm from Marfon Escargo, and I've got a like, uh, small insect farm in County Wexford. Um, most of the stuff that I've done here is just because um, Eva and Penny most of the time help me with everything. Um, the knots program that I got onto at a later stage, only in April, um, pr uh, um, proved very valuable for me. And it helped me uh, to get the success that I got now. Otherwise, I would have surely failed. So this is just a, a small thing that, I've, um, that I put up just to share with you. So I started in Wexford this year. And my initial plan was to produce 10 tons. I just got sh uh, shy of that, 9,132 um, kilograms that we got out. But at least it's a good start for the beginning. So uh, what I do is full cycle farming. So it's not only just baby snails rearing them and selling them on. So it's from breeding, incubation, doing all of it. But I'll go through the process later. So we produce babies as well. This is the most difficult part. It's harvesting the eggs. It's a full time job if you want to do that. And it's not only for one person. So on a, um, to produce about 1.2 million babies, you know, for, uh, <coughs> sorry, for 10 tons. It will take up all your time and you need at least two people to do it. Um, and it was so difficult to try and get anything from the continent, from uh, everywhere, because of the transport costs. So we started um, sourcing things, some from China, some from Greece, um, all of those things. So I'll just show you what we got. Um, the challenges I faced is the amount of work in the breeding and harvesting. I, didn't, uh, I wasn't prepared for it but I learned it the hard way. The help that I got from the Job Bridge program, it was a good thing of passing on knowledge, trying to help others to start their own ones, uh, their own snail farms, um, as well as getting help, and it was for free to me. Then I used a website called workaway.info. Um, they helped a lot as well um, with the people that come, they stay for uh, board and lodging and food and then they help you for five hours a day or whatever you've got contracted with them. Then the other thing um, I had a problem with is drying the snails. Because of the humidity, it's, it's very difficult. But hopefully with a proper dry store that we build, or if we can all get together, sell it to one central place, then we'll be able to um, avoid that cost. Because um, you need to build something proper. The polytunnel doesn't work like we tried. Uh, keeping them in a container doesn't work. So. These are all things um, we'll look into in the future. Then the documentation and procedures uh, to export. It was quite difficult as there's no regulations at the moment. No one knows what to do. And it's not to try and get the stuff out of Ireland, but it's the country that's receiving it. Um, my produce that I sold this year went um, via Portugal um, into Sao Tome, which is uh, just off the uh, coast of Nigeria. Um, through that, it was very, very difficult um, to deal with the DVO, the Department of Agriculture. No one really wants to listen to you and your problems. Until you persist, I literally got on the telephone and I said, I'm not getting off the line until you help me and sort out my problem. So eventually we got that done. But if there's more of us, life will be easier for, for everyone. So that's what I'll try and, uh, and help with as well. And then the purchasing of the material and the equipment that's needed. To import things one by one is, is very expensive. We don't have a proper manufacturing facility in this country, so that's why most of the stuff comes in either from the continent or from the UK. So just trying to pull everything together will all save money in the end. So this is just a little tour of my farm. The type of snails that I do is the pedigree or the Helix Aspersa Muller. Um, it's more tastier for me. Um, and then this is like what I grew up with. I don't know any of the other snails. Eva's got a bit of experience with Maxima, but, um, and Maxima is important as well for shells, when you uh, sell for, for, um, for food and uh, prepare your own stuff. So Penny will be able to tell you more on that. Then this is my breeding room. What I used is just a 40 foot shipping container. I insulated it. This is what it looks like um, on the left. Uh, the snails come and they eat on the top there. I've got um, boards, um, which I'll show you later with the um, incubation pots. So this is my polytunnel that I put up. It's 25 meters by seven and a half meters. It was supposed to be to increase my um, area to 20 tons to produce it. 
but I don't have my own place, so I'm renting at the moment, and it didn't end up well, so I'll have to move it again. So this is what the baby snails look like when I put them in the polytunnel, because it's, 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 it's too cold and they won't eat. We have to put, I had to put them in the, in the polytunnel until um, about May, when to just make sure that all the frost is gone um, and that they will eat more. Then this is my fattening area. Uh, I didn't do it properly the first time. I thought I'll save money, uh, cut corners by not using the proper nets, but you know, I paid for it later on, uh, having to pick up all the snails every day. You know, touching them is not very good. Uh, it's, it just delays growth and everything else. So this is the processes that I went through. It's breeding, the incubation of them. Um, you get the baby snails, you put them out into the fattening area, and then purging and drying them, getting re ready for hibernation and to ship. So in the breeding room, this is basically how they mate. Um, on there, you can see on the, uh, I put food on the, on the planks there, and in the middle I've got the pots that you fill with soil, and you change it every three days. That's where they conveniently lay their eggs for us to harvest. Um, through their incubation, you harvest the eggs. It's very, very time consuming because one pot can take up to six clusters of eggs. Um, that is usually what they look like. But on the right, if you see some of them, you know, uh, um, the eggs are scattered all over. So it takes about 15 minutes to do a pot if they've got lots of those scattered ones. So this is a, a very difficult um, part of it, and it's very time consuming and it's a monotonous job, you know, just trying to dig through soil to get eggs. Then into the polytunnel they go. My babies were there for two and a half months before I put them out. Um, it was a bit overcrowded, but eventually we got them out. So this is the fattening area. As you can see, the feeding boards that I used, and then the snails usually hide underneath there during the day. I've got anti-bird netting on the top, and I've just got post and um, a misting system on the top. So through the harvesting, at least not to help me, they did the harvesting training there, and I got a lot of um, help. And then it took me about 20 full days. You can't harvest unless you had two dry days at least, otherwise just too many of them um, die. September was a disaster of a month weather-wise, so I went well into October to do it. It took me, as five people, six to nine hours a day, 20 full days to harvest all of that. Um, purging and drying, the humidity is a big, big, big problem, like I said. They keep waking up and going back to sleep, waking up. There's no proper operculum that's forming. So this is one of our, uh, the weak part of the process, which we need to look into and try and fix. So a dry store is very, very important. The sorting and transportation, that's another thing that I didn't bargain. I thought you'll just sell all the snails to one person, just our rate. But you know, different countries take the different sizes. So sorting them, you know, this can be pulled together and, we, and to save on uh, resources. You need to check for the dead snails, you remove the broken shells, but nothing goes to waste. You sell everything to different markets. So my mistakes, the biggest ones, <laughs> I had to sew on manually um, these electric fence tapes onto um, the individual paddock uh, nets. So as you can see, the many types we, we tried, and the only one that worked is the French one. The only thing is, the French one is very expensive, so we looked at China and we got it in for a bit cheaper there. Um, another mistake that I made is the food that I changed in mid-season. Um, as you can see here, how I tested it with the help of Penny is to check, and you see the snail is half full, so that means you know, it's not enough um, meat on them, and then the less money you make. The netting of the pathways, I had things growing in my pathways which encouraged the snails to get out. I didn't use the proper nets. Um, the anti-bird netting that I used was a cheaper version, 32 gram per square meter, which broke very easily. And then the windbreak and the scaffolding netting and stuff, the snails ate them. So trying to cut corners is not always the best, uh, the best idea. And then we just do um, our collaboration is with Penny and with Eva, like the, um, she said as well. So the supplies that we tried, um, so we got the net for the external perimeter netting that we got, and we saved it. Uh, on a 10 ton production, we'll save about um, 1,600 euro by just uh, getting the proper net here. And then this is the electric tape, like I showed you, which is good. The Fregros net, which Penny is supplying, 
This is the one with the two flaps. We got it in. Buying in bulk, it reduces the cost of shipping, so it's a bit more affordable to us all. Then the seeds, this comes through Penny as well. Um, the, the best ones are the beetroot, the sunflower, the cabbage, and then the radicio, radish, chicorium, whatever you want to call it, is a, a, is a very good one, especially for the calcium needs of the snails. And then rocket, of course, but rocket again, it only has a lifespan of about 60 days. <coughs> The antifreeze uh, um, anti netting that comes from Penny as well, she's helping us with that. And then the packaging um, nets, which just comes in 500 meters. There are some samples at the back there, so if anyone wants to have a look at them. Um, and then the ready-to-eat products that we'll be launching hopefully into stores very soon with the help of Penny. And then just to say thank you to everyone, uh, to Nuts especially for getting me onto the program, and Margaret, you know, she's been a lifesaver, she helped me a lot, and Sean, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and then to Penny, she's been helping me through loads and loads and loads of disasters and mistakes and everything that I did, so thank you very much. I hope you like the picture. <laughs> and then to Eva as well, you know, taking all my calls. I usually panic very quickly, so it's, it's nice to have people to help you. And then Frederica, I don't know where she is now, but she helped me a lot her and so fast as well. And then also thank you to the local enterprise office, um, the SBCI uh, with AIV, they helped me with startup loans. Sure, they got me a refund um, um, from revenue. And then Wexford County Council and the local development, they all made it possible. And that's it. <laughs> thank you very much.